tonight, more disturbances to track in the Pacific and elsewhere. around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for August 18th. Well, all we've got on the radar right now is what's left of Yvette in the Eastern Pacific, but more cyclones could be on the way as we'll delve into the individual areas. We've got code blue in effect for the Indian Ocean, for a disturbance that could affect a lot of people with heavy rainfall. Day 79 in the Atlantic and it is still empty with no areas of interest at the moment um, and nothing expected in the next five days, although beyond that time period we may start to see a little bit of life. In the Eastern Pacific all we have is the remnants of Yvette, no other areas are suspect or expected to form in the next five days so a quiet eastern pacific for once it would seem with just the trailing poor old remnants of Yvette. In the western pacific we've got a 10% chance that we've designated in the Philippine Sea right now. There are also other areas that could be classified but due to model uncertainty we haven't marked the other areas right now. There's actually four inverse active I believe in the western pacific and in the Indian Ocean we've marked a 20% chance now just emerging uh, off Myanmar an area of interest that could develop into a tropical cyclone before striking eastern India. Regardless of development it will cause substantial amounts of rain which could lead to flooding for millions. Let's take a look at latest satellite imagery across the Atlantic and it's looking pretty bereft of any activity really apart from uh, the main um, little bit of possible rotation but certainly thunderstorms occurring along the Yucatan Peninsula and just off the coast there into the um, Caribbean Sea. In the Eastern Pacific uh, this is what we're showing right now not much to look at just a lot of general uh, disorganized thunderstorms all across the ITCZ and also up the coast of Mexico and if you look carefully you'll spot the remnants of Yvette and in the Western Pacific you can see here um, again several different disturbances that are currently active there right now none of them looking particularly appetizing just yet but things may change as time goes on and we've identified the one with the best chance is probably the one that's headed towards just east of the Philippine Islands. And into our other spots, the Indian Ocean, you can get another look at the massive amounts of convection blowing up over the Bay of Bengal already ahead of that low pressure system that could develop and also a few little flashes over in uh, the coast of Pakistan there as well in the Arabian Sea. And in the Southern Hemisphere, it's a fairly quiet wintry picture for Australia and New Zealand with a few frontal systems churning up energy around there as well from uh, New Caledonia down to New Zealand. Let's check sea surface temperatures then. You can see that Yvette, where its remnants are over, still okay sea surface temperatures actually, but cooling quite a bit. Um, Eastern Pacific still got a lot more to offer by the way when you look at those SSTs. Atlantic obviously has loads to offer. Um, temperatures generally running a little bit above average. Gulf of Mexico around average 30 degrees Celsius nonetheless. And you can see just how much of a large part of the Atlantic Ocean is open for business uh, when it comes to tropical cyclones. One thing I'd just say is that maybe a little bit cool off the coast of the Carolinas. The Indian Ocean is fairly warm as well, 30 degrees, just a little area there off uh, West Bengal. And in the Philippine Sea, very warm sea surface temperatures there again, also up towards the Japanese Ryukyu Islands. In fact, that's probably the hotspot still uh, around, the, uh, around Okinawa and the rest of the Ryukyu Islands and in the Gulf of Tonkin. 
Generally good temperatures though all round. Sea surface temperature anomalies are starting to decrease a little bit in the tropical western Pacific. The Atlantic is generally above average apart from the Gulf and a little bit below average now off the US East Coast, I thought right. And in the eastern Pacific, generally below average with the La Nina in effect still in the central part there, although in some of the tropical development areas it is a bit above average. Uh, OHC, the oceanic heat content, you can see is extremely favourable once again in the Caribbean Sea into the Gulf of Mexico. Keep watching that area very closely. Western Pacific also piping hot, of course, as you would expect. And that's creeping over towards the Eastern Pacific now as well, just a little bit. So I certainly wouldn't rule out more developments in the Eastern Pacific this season, which is batting well above um, its expectations so far. Here's some models then, uh, nothing to look at in the Western Hemisphere, so we're straight to the Western Pacific uh, where you can see several different areas of interest that try to form, one in the South China Sea, one near the Philippines, the one that we've marked, and another there that GFS is more confident on than the other models, uh, depicting it becoming a tropical storm at a higher latitude there, well to the east of the Japanese islands, so there's a potential third tropical cyclone and who knows, maybe a fourth in there somewhere as well. Here's the Indian Ocean. This happens very quickly indeed, this area of interest that becomes a tropical cyclone. GFS is very sold on the idea. Other models a lot more hesitant, so I wouldn't really trust this with your full confidence. Uh, but this is what the GFS is showing. I guess you could say it's a worst case scenario. That's towards hurricane status, but not really anywhere close to that. Uh, the main problem from this system would be the rainfall and we've got rainfall charts here this is assuming the GFS scenario is right now bearing in mind it has a stronger storm than any of the others so that's more convection and more rainfall potential uh, so this is once again probably a worst case scenario all the red zones there are 10 inches of rain or higher that's around 250 millimeters um, and those are storm totals and you can see their maximums of around 12 inches inland in central India um, and a small area of 19 inches there just off the coast of Myanmar. So potentially extremely high amounts of rain for some of those areas. A very thin swathe but it is still more than 20 million people in the potential chance for uh, 10 inches. In the longer range, day 5 through 10, we can look at the Atlantic and a wave that moves through the main development region down there in the tropical zone. You can see a tiny little thing starting to form there and it does become a tropical cyclone. Look how small it is. Um, smaller, almost as small as some of those um, Caribbean islands. But there it is moving through towards the west. Sometimes you get really tiny systems like this that happen usually in July, August. Uh, so that could well be another one on the cards but that is in the longer range towards day 10. Western Pacific you can see two of those systems eventually forming uh, the second one moving through to the East China Sea and then another one forming uh, well out in the open Western Pacific probably not far from Minami Torishima if you're familiar with that place well to the east of the Mariana Islands that's around what the 25th of August so that is around seven days away so you know uh, an interesting chance on that one but we haven't designated it and it does become a typhoon there on the longer range well, that's all the serious stuff done with. You can take a look at the Force City merch store by uh, scanning the barcode and you can check out all of what we have, including the still waiting for Hone t-shirts and you can request, you can request individual storms and full season animations. Long range in the Atlantic, you can see what happens with that storm. Also, if you didn't see it there, a brief spin-up possible tropical storm in the Gulf of Mexico that strikes Louisiana. And then that storm, what was left of it, moving through the Caribbean Sea there, and potentially another one forming behind it in the MDR. You can see that um, Louisiana storm there just passed and inland now. So that's a short-lived system. But even on long range GFS, no hurricanes through the 1st of September, so uh, that might be something interesting. Western Pacific, you can see this typhoon becomes quite substantial. Obviously it's long range, I wouldn't put any faith into this and it gets really big. Uh, pressure bottoms out, I think it's in the 930s, definitely 940s. And then the massive thing moves off towards the northeast 
after giving Japan a bit of a close call reminds me actually of one of the recent On This Days. Was it Fanphone, I think, in 2002? Reminds me very much of that when you look at that track. Meanwhile, on this day in 1969, Hurricane Camille. Well, what can you say about that? Uh, one of the most powerful destructive storms um, a once in a generation storm event um, in ways it was worse than Katrina in other ways Katrina was much worse but Camille was an absolutely devastating storm for the Gulf Coast particularly in Mississippi um, Debbie was also active a category 2 in the Atlantic was a fish storm and Cora was a category 1 typhoon headed northwest Meanwhile, on this day, feels like such a long time ago now, 1969, not that I was there. The next name in the Atlantic is Danielle, in the Eastern Pacific the next name is Javier, and in the Central Pacific the next name is Hone. In the Western Pacific the next name coming up is Ma'on, and in the North Indian Ocean we'll be looking out next for Citrang. We've seen 46 storms so far, which is exactly half of what we usually expect in a year. So in the last four months of the year, it's going to be pretty busy if we're going to reach that. Darien is next up in Australia. The Southwest Indian Ocean starts with Ashley and then the South Pacific. The next name is Harley. That's all for tonight. We'll have another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow night.